purpose of the polymerase chain reaction is to allow scientists to quickly replicate millions of copies of a specific DNA sequence in a short amount of time, or more specifically, two hours. This takes out the need to utilize bacteria in order to make copies of DNA. When using this technology, the original DNA must be moved into a special PCR tube. As you can see here, the extracted DNA is being moved into the PCR tube. Next, the primers must be added to the PCR tube. Then, nucleotide basis ATCG must be added into the PCR tube. Lastly, DNA polymerase is added into the mixture. The PCR tube and all its contents are moved to the DNA thermal cycler. The machine heats and cools the mixture in order to succeed in making copies of DNA. In the DNA thermal cycler, first, the DNA sequence sample must be heated to 94 to 96 degrees Celsius for several minutes. This denatures and separates the DNA into two independent strands. Second, the temperature is lowered to 50 to 65 degrees Celsius for several minutes in order to allow the primers to base pair to complementary sequences. These primers are designed to focus on specific regions of the DNA. Third, the temperature increases to 72 degrees Celsius for several minutes and an enzyme called TAC polymerase is utilized. By doing this, this enzyme is able to attach to the primers and continue making a new DNA strand. The result is two new DNA strands for one original DNA strand. The cycle continues until the desired number of DNA strands are achieved. In just 30 cycles, a billion DNA copies can be made. So, what is it about the nature of the DNA molecule and the biological processes cells use to manipulate DNA that allow these technologies to work? Well, the nucleotide sequences in a DNA strand are always complementary. A will always go with T and G will always go with C. Because of this nature of having complementary sequences, PCR is able to easily construct DNA by allowing primers to base pair complementary sequences. With this natural trait, DNA is able to be quickly and easily synthesized through PCR. In what circumstances has this technology proven to be useful for advancing our knowledge of DNA and heredity? PCR is used in forensic science in which it is utilized to capture a criminal. A single piece of DNA can be amplified by PCR and used in investigations to undergo tests. It is useful in situations where the amount of DNA sample is limited. PCR is also used in evolutionary studies. PCR can amplify small amounts of DNA from fossils, mummified tissues, bones, and hair from the past. In what practical ways has this technology influenced or affected people beyond the scientific realm? PCR has contributed to helping people diagnose genetic diseases. It is also used in the diagnosis of cancers and sex determination of embryos. The DNA resulting from PCR are used in care testings of several inherited disorders. The DNA can also undergo methods such as endonuclease digestion or gel electrophoresis in order to detect mutations resulting in single gene disorder. Recombinant DNA is a DNA strand that has been combined with one or more DNA strands to create a hybrid. This resulting hybrid DNA strand is also known as a chimera and can be used by scientists to create new strands of DNA. The purpose of recombinant DNA is to create multiple copies of DNA and make hybrid DNA strands by combining two or more DNA strands together. Through this technology, scientists can make alterations to that gene by combining it with other genes from another DNA strand, and examine and utilize the expression of those genes. This means that scientists will be able to examine and or use the products of those genes. What are the procedures that must be followed when using the technology correctly? First, a DNA strand must be isolated from the rest of the cell. The DNA most likely used for analysis is extracted from eukaryotes or the main genomic DNA from prokaryotes. 
While this is being done, the plasmid chromosomes that will be used to carry the new DNA segment will also be isolated from the bacterial cell. In order to do this, plasmids participate in ultracentrifugation involving chloride density gradient containing ethidium bromide. This results in plasmids forming a band. This band is collected. Because a specific alkaline pH can denature the DNA of the bacteria but not the plasmids, the plasmids become isolated and accessible. The second step is to cut the DNA using restriction enzymes. These restriction enzymes have the ability to cut up DNA. Once the DNA has been cut, it is left with sticky enzymes. The cut made by these restriction enzymes open up the plasma circle, making one linear molecule. The third step is to join the donor DNA with the open plasmid. In order to do this, the donor DNA and plasmids are mixed together along with a combination of restriction enzymes. These enzymes digest the donor DNA and plasmids, allowing the sticky ends of the plasmids to bind to the donor DNA. Once the donor DNA and plasmids have come together to form a chimeric molecule, the sugar phosphate backbones are still incomplete. The DNA ligase enzyme comes to seal the backbones by creating phosphodiester bonds to form recombinant DNA. The last step is to amplify the DNA by placing the chimeric DNA into a host bacterial cell. The bacterial DNA will divide, creating billions of cells with billions of copies of the recombinant DNA. What is it about the nature of the DNA molecule and the biological processes cells use to manipulate DNA that allow these technologies to work? One of the most important steps in using this recombinant DNA process is cutting the DNA by using restriction enzymes. Naturally, cells use restriction enzymes in their biological processes. They are used as a defense mechanism against phages. They do not cut at random segments of the DNA. Instead, they target specific sequences in the DNA, making them perfect for DNA manipulation. The nature of the plasmid molecule sequence and hydrogen bonds make it ideal for forming DNA chimeras. Once cut with the same restriction enzyme, the plasmids are left with sticky ends. These ends are sticky because they have the ability to hydrogen bond to a complementary sequence. The ends will produce complementary sticky ends, making it possible for the recombinant DNA to easily form. A bacterial cell's natural ability of reproducing rapidly is crucial in the amplification step of the recombinant DNA. Once the plasmid with the donor DNA is inserted into the bacterial cell, it is able to replicate due to its replication origin. The bacteria replicates the recombinant DNA and undergoes division. The bacterial culture grows, producing identical clones of the recombinant molecule. As a result, there will be billions of copies of the recombinant DNA. In what circumstances has this technology proven to be useful for advancing our knowledge of DNA and heredity? Recombinant DNA technology is used for genetic engineering. For example, some plants known as transgenic plants carry foreign genes. Some transgenic plants include herbicide-resistant plants, plants that are resistant to pests thanks to bacterial gene that is toxic to insects, flowers that stay fresh for longer, and more. Genetic engineering is also used in animals known as transgenic animals. As you can see, scientists start with the human insulin gene and the plasmid, which is a loop of bacterial DNA. Scientists then cut a part of the plasmid using restriction enzymes. The sticky parts of the plasmid then allow the human insulin gene to attach to it. The DNA ligase enzyme then closes up and seals the sugar phosphate backbones. The plasmid is then returned to the bacteria. These recombinant DNA bacteria are then left in fermentation tanks, where they will start producing insulin. The insulin is then harvested for use. The result is a purified medicine insulin made by bacteria and recombinant DNA. Through this technology, people are able to be provided with insulin. It is much easier to harvest insulin from bacteria than a pig or a human. Insulin is key in managing blood sugar, especially in diabetes. It keeps the level of sugar in blood at a normal range. It has saved millions of lives and continues to do so.